so today I thought that I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, obviously, we're still learning, but <laughs> uh, something a little bit different now. Nah. So uh, I'm going to post up uh, a link to this uh, simulation, <clears throat> okay? And uh, we're going to use this simulation uh, for our learning today, lah. Okay, so uh, pay attention to the chat and also to this short, very, very short briefing because after this, I'm going to ask you to do the work and then we're going to come back and discuss. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about uh, diffraction. Okay, diffraction, I'm spelling it out in the chat now. Huh? Okay, so our concept that we're going to learn today is diffraction. So far, we have learned two out of the four wave phenomena. So the first one is reflection, okay, go and come back. The second one is refraction, okay, refraction is you go in and then after you bend, okay, and the reason why the wave bends or the changes direction, changing the direction of the wave uh, is because of, you know, different densities. If it is water, then it's different depth, okay. Uh, if it is sound, uh, it's different uh, layers of air. But the basic underlying principle behind uh, refraction okay is the change in density okay the density of the water changes then you get you know different wave uh, uh, different wave patterns lah. okay so that's the two so the third phenomena okay which we are going to look at this week okay is the phenomena of diffraction now some people like to pronounce this as diffraction but I don't think I've ever heard anybody um, uh, correcting them lah. okay i think no not i think i know that it is actually pronounced as diffraction not diffraction <clears throat> okay so diffraction uh, so what is diffraction is the thing that i want you to study today uh, using this simulation okay so what you will need is of course your module okay which i can't show you now okay <clears throat> so the module uh, uh, you're going to do it in page 148 <clears throat> oh sorry okay so you're going to be using this simulation okay and explore it on your own and you're going to do everything in page 149 all the way until page 150 question number nine okay as much as you can lah. okay but quite a lot of things actually you can do just by exploring this simulation on your own okay you can if you're going to use your phone then you just leave this google mean on and switch over to another window lah. Okay, I'll click on the link later. So everything in page 149 and page 150 until question number 9 on the top left. Okay, is what I want you to do in the next 20 minutes uh, after I finish my briefing. Uh. Okay, so let me introduce this to you. Once you go into this simulation, I want you to go to slits. Okay, you can do the waves and interference and this diffraction at your own time. But today, I want to just focus on the slit. <clears throat> okay, so when you click on the slit, Okay, this is what you're going to see. Lah. Okay, something that you're going to see. Yeah? Okay, so uh, this is what we call a slit. Okay, over here, this is what we call a slit. And you can adjust uh, the width of the slit by adjusting this. Okay, this and this. Lah. Okay, you can make it smaller slit. You can make it a wider slit. Okay, and then after that, uh, you can... <clears throat> okay, I'm going to take out the slit first. Huh? Okay, then when you want to start the wave, okay, you just press this green button over here. Lah. Okay, and then the wave the wave will happen. So this is something like the ripple tank, lah, okay, view from the top. So you get this one. So, okay, uh, how do you change the wavelength? Okay, let me pause this. Lah. Now remember the wavelength is the distance between one crest to another crest. So one bright to another bright or one dark to another dark. Lah. Okay, so... Um, how do you change this wavelength? Huh? Oh, sorry. Okay, how do you change this wavelength? Is you change this frequency. Okay, the bigger your frequency, okay, the smaller your wavelength. And then if you set a smaller frequency, okay, this is a little bit too much, but uh, this is a very big wavelength. Lah. And because the distance between one bright to another bright is so far apart. As opposed to if I change the frequency, uh, sorry, if I change the frequency to become much bigger, so the bigger frequency will give you a smaller wavelength and the smaller frequency will give you a bigger wavelength. So that's how you change the wavelength in this particular simulation. 
Uh, if you want, you can also explore. Okay, let me reset this. Huh? Okay, if you want, you can also explore. Uh, sorry, you need to have one slip. <clears throat> okay, hold on, let me reset everything. Okay, so you're going to, uh, once you're doing this, okay, you can also explore if you want. Once you finish everything, uh, okay, you can also explore the usage of sound if you want and also the usage of light. Lah. But basically, it's the same. Lah. Okay, even if, let's say, you use the light, nah, so green color will have one kind of wavelength, okay, and then uh, purple color will have another kind of wavelength, okay. But that one, we will discuss this. Uh, you can also explore with this, uh, maybe tomorrow or after this class. Uh. But what I want you to do today is go through everything in question, uh, in page 149 and 150, okay. Answer it to the best of your ability. Try not to... Uh, refer to the book, lah. okay, use your own words to explore, use your own words to explain, okay, and we try to discover this for ourselves, okay, and then uh, once you're done, so I will give you about, now it's 8.40, yeah? so 9 o'clock, okay, 9 o'clock, everybody, I mean, you don't leave this Google Meet, lah, obviously, okay, but 9 o'clock, we will uh, resume this, okay, and I hope that by 9 o'clock, you are ready to show me your answers. Lah. I may probably need you to open your camera to show me the answer, okay, so that uh, we can see what is your answer when you draw it out. See you in 20 minutes. Okay, so let's let's begin. Lah, okay, so the first thing that we want to talk about is, again, lah, the idea of diffraction. Lah, okay, and I hope that in doing this simulation, lah, you notice that diffraction is a different phenomenon altogether. Uh, when you compare it to refraction and reflection. So refract, reflection is like it's coming back. But refraction is going forward, but it is going forward in a different direction. It is changed direction. Okay, but diffraction is a totally different thing altogether. Okay, and uh, can I ask anybody to let me know uh, or at least tell me what is the difference between situation number one and situation number two? What happens to the wave pattern uh, after it passes through a small gap and a wide gap? The wave uh, spreads out more after passing through the small gap. Okay. The wave spreads out more okay, after passing through a small gap. I think if you refer to you know textbooks and everything, uh, you can actually get the drawing. Uh. But the idea uh, is that the gap, uh, okay, the gap plays a very important role. And the first thing that we need to notice now about this is that a small gap, okay, like what Ethan said, yeah, the wave spreading out now is, what was the word that you use again? Can you just repeat it? What? What was the word you said? The wave spreads out what now? Spreads out more. Okay, the wave spreads out more, okay, when it is passing through the small gap. Okay, that's a very, very important thing that we need to conclude uh, uh, from this thing. Okay, so good for you. Number two, compare the wavelength. What happens to the wavelength before and after passing the gap? Uh, anybody? It remains the same. Okay, it remains the same. Whether it is a small gap or a big gap, uh, the wavelength remains the same. And our simulation here actually shows us that. Uh, Okay, the wavelength remains the same whether it is a small gap or a big gap. Ah, you know, sometimes I wish that this can go a little bit faster, but <laughs> okay, you find that the distance, uh, although the wave pattern has changed, okay, you find that the distance between one bright to another bright and this bright to another bright, okay, you can actually take a <clears throat> ruler uh, and you measure, uh, okay, actually it remains the same. If let's say I make the gap a little bit bigger, Okay, and I restart everything again. <clears throat> okay, sorry. I restart everything again. You will find that the same thing is happening also. Obviously, this one, the the wave, the spreading out is not so obvious lah, compared to the small one. But the wavelength remains the same. And that's the second thing that we need to conclude now from this. Number one, small gap means the wave spreading out is more obvious. Okay, in, I'm using Ethan's words. Lah. Secondly, whether it is small gap or big gap, sorry, whether it is small gap or big gap, ma, okay, the wavelength remains the same. Okay, and that's a very, very important thing for us to know. Okay, number three, what can you say about the direction of the waves after passing through the gap? 
<clears throat> Anybody want to try this? It spreads to many direction from mm -hmm. one direction. Okay, I think oh. that's a that's a good answer. La. The idea is that after diffraction happens, uh, the wave doesn't go forward anymore. The wave spreads out. Okay, so this is a new word that we need to get used to when we talk about diffraction. La. The wave spreads out. Okay, so the direction of propagation of wave definitely changes, but it is not in a specific direction. La. It spreads out to, like what Wong said, la. it spreads out to many directions. Okay, but the idea is it spreads out. The only difference is that the small gap and the big gap ma, shows us the different kinds of spreading out. Okay, like Ethan said just now, la, if it is a small gap, ma, it spreads out more. It's very, it's more obvious that it spreads out. La. Okay, in a big in a big gap, ma, yes, it spreads out, but it's kind of like, mm, meh, okay, like half spread out, like not really spread out like that. La. Okay, <clears throat> okay, number four, state the changes to the incident waves that occur after passing the gap or the barrier. In our case, it is a gap. La. Okay, what change uh what happens to the frequency wavelength? Wavelength we know. Okay, what what can how can we answer the wavelength? <clears throat> oh dear. What happens to the wavelength? No change. Okay, unchanged, uh, it remains unchanged. Let's talk about the frequency and the wave speed. Which one is this, Rahman? Constant is which one? Frequency or wave speed or both? Do you notice what happens? In this one? Okay, actually it is both. Huh? Notice huh, that obviously because you set the frequency, la, kan? So, so even when it passes through, okay, I'm going to make the slit a little bit smaller. Okay. So even when it passes through, huh, you notice that actually the wave speed huh, is moving the same. Okay, it, is, it doesn't change speed. Okay, it doesn't change uh, frequency because our frequency still remains the same. Okay, so we find uh, that in terms of frequency, wavelength, and wave speed, uh, all three are the same. Okay, and the direction of propagation, as, uh, as we've already mentioned many, many times, the direction of propagation becomes spread out. Okay, it becomes spread out. Okay, but let's talk about the amplitude. What do you think happens to the amplitude after... Uh, after diffraction happens. Decreases. Okay. The amplitude decreases. And we can very clearly see it now from this simulation. On the left side, now, the, the colors are more, you know, are more obvious. But after diffraction happens, uh, the colors kind of like fade away like that. Like, like it's like, it's like dying. <laughs> okay. It's like dying. Okay. Now, I want you to mark Put a star next to the amplitude la, just to remind yourself that amplitude you know uh, is a representation la, of the energy of the wave okay which means la, that after diffraction happens the wavelength remains the same the wave speed remains the same the wave frequency remains the same but the energy of the wave la, has decreased because the amplitude has decreased okay so put a star down there and mark it in your module la. Okay, just to remind yourself, okay, amplitude now got something to do with the energy of the wave. When the amplitude decreases after diffraction, okay, the energy of the wave decreases. And this is very useful for us, and I will show you this uh, in a little while. It's a very important thing for us to remember. Okay, so why does the amplitude of the diffracted waves decrease? Uh, anybody want to try this? Why does it decrease? You have to the ask wave me. loses energy. The wave loses energy okay very good because why why does the wave lose energy <laughs> sorry why uh, does it lose energy? because the wave energy is needed to spread out to many direction okay um <clears throat> so there are a couple of things at play okay and i like ariel's answer and of course wong's answer is correct but Ariel's answer is also very good there is a damp uh, force is i wouldn't say damping force i would say damping Okay, uh, damping alone saja cukup lah. Don't try not to say damping and force together. But I think damping, of course, plays a role here lah. Okay, there is a little bit of damping after it passes through the diffraction. Okay, and like Wong and Rahman and uh, I can't remember who's the other person that says it. Uh, the important thing is when the wave spreads out lah, the energy also spreads out. Okay, so you imagine now, like if a car is going this way, then you know if a car is just coming like this, then after it passes through the gap lah, you know, all the energy that it has uh, is all spread out. 
So obviously, when it is spread out, uh, okay, it's going to have less energy than it originally had. Uh. Okay, damping, I'm very sure, plays a role also. Okay, but the main reason why the amplitude decreases, besides damping, okay, is because after diffraction, uh, the energy is spread out. And when the energy is spread out, the energy will decrease. Uh. <coughs> okay, because they are terpaksa tersebar ke tempat lain. Okay, why? Because, okay, take a look at this. Uh, if you look at this one on the left, sorry. Take, take a look at this part. Uh, okay, all this wave that is coming here is going to be stopped by this wall. And the only wave that can pass through the wall is the wave that is going into the gap. And so obviously, whatever energy it had over here, a lot of the energy is stopped by the wall. And it's stopped by the wall, but it's going, the energy that passes through the gap has to spread out and so kind of like create a certain, you know, like masih other wave effect. But obviously, Compared to the original wave, huh, the energy is so much less. Lah. Okay, so yes, good answers, good answers. <clears throat> Alright, number one, uh, activity number two. Huh? Describe the pattern of the water wave after passing different size of the gaps. Small gap and big gap. <laughs> uh, let's do the circle one first lah, at the bottom. Small gap, the diffraction is obvious or less obvious? Big gap, the diffraction is obvious or less obvious? What do you think is the answer? The small gap is obvious, bigger gap is less obvious. Okay. What about the shape of the wave, the pattern of the wave? Actually, the picture kind of tells us. Sorry, what do you say? Circular shape. Okay. So the small gap ma, will be a circular shape. Okay. Manakala, the, the bigger gap, ma, okay, uh, we call, what? Uh, does anybody know what shape that is? It's not really circular, like it's like. Anybody want to try to guess? So that 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 thing that looks like, like ching chang chong like that, right? <laughs> okay. So that straight line uh, is kind of. Uh, I'm gonna type it out in the chat lah. We call this a plane shape. Okay, plane as in. Uh, dia masih lagi uh, berbentuk sata lah. Okay, plane. And uh, there's a little bit of bending at the edge lah. Okay, and bend. The edge. Okay, so the answer is in the chat. Eh? <clears throat> so on the right hand side, when the gap is much bigger, okay, I think this gap is not big enough, but uh, let, me make, let me increase the frequency a little bit. Lah. Okay. Okay, so you'll find <laughs> this is a very ugly one. Lah. Okay, so you find uh, that it. Uh, okay, pause. Okay. So it kind of still looks like it's still straight. It's not very circular. Okay, it kind of looks like it's still straight. So there's this straight over here and it's bent at the edge. So there's a short bending. Lah. So in the in the workbook, lah, <clears throat> in the module, you see that, that shape that looks like a bracket like that, right? Okay, so we use that as a representation. Lah. Actually, this is what it looks like. Okay, so it's the straight is here and then the bracket is kind of like here. Lah. Okay, so we call this a plane, still kind of plane. Okay, plane as in P-L-A-N-E, yeah. Okay, but it is bent at the edge. Okay, and because of that, the diffraction pattern is less obvious. Okay, much less obvious uh, than this one. Okay, what is the relationship between the shapes of the diffracted waves with the size of the gap? The, the bigger the size of the gap, the smaller the shapes of the diffracted waves. The bigger the size of the gap, the smaller the shape of the uh, diffracted wave. Okay, I think that's a good try. Uh, anybody else got any suggestion? Uh, uh, the smaller the gap, the more circular the shape of the diffracted wave. The smaller the gap, the more circular. Okay, uh, also a good try. Ethan, what were you going to say? The bigger the shape of the diffracted wave, the smaller the gap. The bigger the shape of the... A circular wave, the smaller the gap. Okay, also a good try. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to say which is correct yet, but I'm listening to all the answers. I think uh, I think some of you are kind of getting the idea, but um, not 100% yet. Okay, uh, let's have one last person to try. The smaller the size of the gap, the wider the direction of the diffracted waves. The, the wider the what? 
the wider of the direction. Oh, the wider the direction. Okay, yeah. I, heard, I heard something else. Okay, uh, I think the idea is there. Now, what I would like you to do is, uh, again, make a star on this one. Uh. Um, <clears throat> this is one of those relationships uh, which is a little bit strange. Uh. Usually, when we talk about relationships, we always say, you know, the bigger the force, the bigger the acceleration, the bigger the mass, the bigger the inertia. Okay, and I noticed that all of you are trying to do along that same line. Okay. But what we have noticed, uh, okay, what we have noticed in our discussion so far is that diffraction uh, is a little bit special. Okay, and so most of you got the beginning correct. You know, the bigger the gap or the smaller the gap. Uh, I think that's the first part that needs to be correct. Okay, because it is the gap that determines the pattern of the wave. So the gap must come first. Okay, but I would say <clears throat> the smaller the gap, okay, uh, because the question is uh, the shape of the direct, the, direct, the diffracted waves are shape. So there are only two types of shapes. It's either circular or plane with bend at the edge. Okay, so I would say uh, uh, an example answer lah, which I will probably accept lah, is the smaller the gap, okay, the more circular the diffracted wave. Okay, let me repeat lah. the smaller the gap the more circular the diffracted wave. Okay. Smaller the gap, the more circular the diffracted wave. Okay. And, you know, vice versa. Lah. The bigger the gap, the less circular the diffracted wave. Okay. Um, another possible answer, and I don't know about the rest of you, lah, whether you wrote this. If you wrote this, it can also be correct. Lah. The smaller, oh, sorry smaller the gap the more of uh, the more spread out the diffracted wave okay. a smaller gap uh, has a more spreading uh, okay and <clears throat> and of course the other way around also works like uh, the bigger the gap the less spread out it will be okay uh, i think this uh would be yeah this would be the two relationships that uh, that we can put in. La. So I think some of you are getting the idea over there. But again, la, as I said, because when we are talking about relationship, la, we are so used to the bigger, the, the smaller, the, the bigger, the, the smaller. The. This is just one of those very rare ones, very rare relationships la, where it's a little bit special. La. Okay, It doesn't happen often and this is one of those instances when it happens. Okay, so put a star over there to remind yourself uh, that, oh, okay, this one, the relationship a little bit different. Uh, okay, we have to say the more circular the diffracted wave or the more spread out uh, the diffracted wave. Okay, that is a good one. Uh. All right, <clears throat> let's talk about the diffraction pattern. So just now was the factor of the size of the gap. Okay, you change the gap uh, uh, and then you get a different pattern. Okay, the second one is you change the wavelength. And in our simulation over here, I said that how do you change the wavelength is you change the frequency. So big frequency means small wavelength. Sorry, small frequency means big wavelength. Okay, I'm going to put a small gap, a smaller gap like this. Okay. So, <clears throat> so let's talk about the obvious and less obvious first. Which one is less obvious and which one is more obvious in terms of wavelength short wavelength less obvious long wavelength more obvious okay short wavelength is less obvious more wave <coughs> sorry big <coughs> sorry long wavelength is more obvious okay and short wavelength uh, okay is uh is less obvious okay uh, as you can see over here lah. now look back at question number one okay look back at question number one uh, and can you fill in the the empty box in the this one the big wavelength is a uh, circular shape then the short wavelength is plane and bend at the edge okay yeah plane and bend at the edge okay so this is another relationship which we have to talk about which is question number eight what is the relationship between the shape of the diffracted wave and the size of the wavelength. Again, uh, remember that the size of the wavelength is the determining factor. So that one must come first. 
Okay, anybody want to try? Uh, the bigger the size of the wavelength, the more circular of the diffracted waves. Mm. Okay, I think that's acceptable. The bigger the size of the wavelength is the exact same one. Sorry, it is the exact same style of answering. Okay, the bigger the size of the wavelength. Okay, the smaller the uh, sorry the more obvious lah. Okay, the more circular the the shape of the diffracted wave. Okay, now I want you to mark again lah, another marking lah. So in question number six lah, okay, in question number six, I want you to mark down there if you still have any more space to write now. Mark down there that the wavelength is constant. Number six. <clears throat> okay. Because the relationship is between the size of the gap and the shape of the wave. So the wavelength must be constant. Okay. And then number eight, nah, it is not the wavelength that is constant. The size of the gap must be constant. It means you cannot change the size of the gap. Okay. You are only changing the wavelength. You change the wavelength, then you see the wave pattern. Nah. You cannot change both at the same time. You know, It's like, what? How to compare? Okay. So number six, nah, mark down there. Okay, the wavelength is constant. Number eight, you mark down there, you mark the size of the gap is constant. Okay, so what are the two factors uh, that make a very obvious diffraction pattern? When we say obvious, that uh, means you can definitely see circle. Okay, what are the two factors? Anybody? The size of the gap, the size of the gap and also the wavelength. Okay, talk, talk to me about, uh, because we want more obvious diffraction, so the size of the gap must be what? The wavelength must be what? Can you complete uh, that? This smaller, this uh, small uh, size of the gap. Okay. And also... a bigger wavelength. Okay, so these are the two very important uh, factors. Okay, well done. So the small size of the gap and a big wavelength are the two factors uh, that determine that the waves are more spread out. And remember, uh, when the waves are more spread out, means you are spreading out the energy a lot more. Okay, there are times when this is good and there are times when this is not good. Uh. There are times where you don't really want the energy to be spread out. But more often than not, there are more times where we want the energy to be spread out. Whereas when the energy is spread out, the wave energy is decreasing. Okay, so make sure you have this link in mind. Okay, we are always talking about, you know, circular shape, circular shape, circular shape. Circular shape means the wave is more spread out. More spread out means the energy of the wave is decreasing. And how do you make sure that the wave is more spread out so that the energy decreases? You make the size of the gap smaller, you make the wavelength much bigger. Okay, and that is the thing that we want to talk about uh, today. So, <clears throat> let's go back to page 148. Okay, page 148. Nah, and let's talk about the what is diffraction. <laughs> okay, so what is diffraction? Okay, anybody want to try this? Everything that we've done today is all about diffraction. Lah. What is diffraction? What happens when a wave is diffracted? Spreading of waves after what? There is a condition for the waves to spread. No? Lepas dia spreading, dia spread kerana apa? That's a good start. Lah. Diffraction is the spreading of waves. I think Rahman has gotten it. Lah. Just a little bit of wording kena betulkan. Lah. So diffraction lah, is the spreading of the waves. Okay? after it passes selepas dia melalui okay after it passes through a slit okay and i'm going to add the last word here or a gap hey, hey, sorry or a uh, or an obstacle <laughs> sorry 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 please ignore the gap slit is gap lah kan okay so spreading of waves after it passes through a slit or a gap okay or an obstacle which we did not discuss in this simulation lah Okay, actually, the wave can also spread out uh, if it is if there is a small if there's a small rock. Okay, let's say if I <clears throat> let's say in this simulation now, uh, if I put a rock over here, right, instead of this one, the waves will also be diffracted. 
Of course, when we are talking about uh, in our situation over here, okay, in our situation over here, we are talking more about sleep lah, because you know that is the one that we that, that is the one that we we refer to more. Okay, but the definition of diffraction, uh, it says the spreading of the waves after it passes through a slit or an obstacle. Okay, because when a wave hits a rock, uh, it also spreads out. That, that's very natural. Uh, kind of. We always see it spreading out after it hits uh, a rock. Okay, but uh, I think the new thing for us over here is the idea that it passes through the slit. Okay, can you turn to tutorial 6.2? Okay, turn to tutorial 6.2. Uh. I just want you to answer question number one. Okay, so Ariel says is C, Bernadine says is C, and right now I'm showing you the question over here. Lah. Okay, why do you say is C? <clears throat> why is it not A? Why what is wrong with A and okay, B and D are definitely out lah. <laughs> okay, but what is wrong with A? Why is A wrong? Can anybody tell me why A is wrong? Because the gap is small but the ways is plain and bent at this side yeah okay excellent all right so yeah the answer is c so b yeah okay let me just explain to you lah. b is what happens uh, actually after it passes through an obstacle so i'm just going to briefly draw this over here okay so let's say you have the plane waves over here so ugly and you have a, a, a obstacle over here lah. okay so let pretend this is a rock lah. So what happens uh, when it hits the obstacle, the part where it hits the obstacle is obviously going to be, uh, it's obviously going to be uh, stopped. Lah. So yang akan melepasinya adalah yang ini. Okay, this one will be sun. So what happens is it's going to spread out. Okay, it's going to spread out in this matter, lah, in this way. Lah. Uh, so this is how diffraction happens uh, when the wave passes through an obstacle. All right, that's it for today. Uh, thanks everyone for your participation.